Okay, so last time we were talking about the heavenly places equating to our promised land. Do you remember that? We, we talked about the verses in Ephesians and how that equates to our promised land. So um, we're going to talk more about some verses we, left, we started with last week, and our title is Pulling Down Strongholds from those verses. So to live in heavenly places meant we were living above the sins of, the earth, of this earth, starting with taking control of our thoughts or mind. And that's when we started in those verses in 2 Corinthians 10. We're going to talk a little more about that. I'm just going to harp and harp. <laughs> It is. Definitely is. It is for me. I know that. That's where the battle starts. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Oh, look. We're having internet problems already. Why are we having internet problems? Poor Chris probably just got on and got disconnected. Oh, she did? I don't know. We got disconnected. I can't tell. She probably got tired of waiting. I bet. During our prayer, you hear your story. You guys pray too much. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that. Oh, I told you we have it again. Okay. Which is true. So, let's go back and read what we were reading last week. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So you notice it says casting down arguments. We didn't really talk about that last week, so I wanted to start with that. Carnal and worldly ways of thinking and doing are arguments against the mind and methods of God. They want to debate God saying they have a better way. You know, like when God tells you to do something, but you start reasoning away why you shouldn't, you're basically arguing with God, saying you know better, right? Yes, there you go. Kick it. Yeah, Paul had that issue, didn't he? <laughs> we all do. We all have that issue. None of us are beyond that. But um, these carnal, carnal arguments have been going on since the Garden of Eden. That's, of course, where it all began. So what did Satan tell Eve in Genesis 3, 1 through 4? Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you, die, oops, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. <clears throat> then the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. So right off the bat, Satan wants... Eve, and what he does the same thing with us. He wants us to think his ways are smarter, they're more sophisticated, he knows better, he's got the better answer. So right away he's countermanding what God has told them is the best way, <laughs> the best thing, and he knows you're going to spiritually die. And so he's warning them, God warned them for their benefit. It's the best choice, but Satan, of course, is going to argue <laughs> and make you start arguing in your head with what's right. So Satan is using the carnal argument that eating the fruit and being like God and knowing good and evil is better than God's rule of not eating the fruit. <coughs> you know, you want to be wise, don't you? You want, to, you want to be smart. You want to have all that knowledge. That's got to be better than not eating the fruit. Or, you know. But, you know, she, you know, she added the one phrase yes, in there that added. wasn't in part of, you know, you can't touch it. Well, God didn't say that. He said, said don't eat, eat it. it. Yeah. Yeah, she was, she was clarifying. <laughs> 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 we all tend to add things, don't we? 
So back to verse 5 it says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself. So you notice it says every high thing that exalts itself. So if if you are saying there's a better way, you're exalting your way, your idea, your concept, or the devil's concept, wherever it came from, over God. You're exalting yourself or the idea. Um, if God has told us his way is to live or do things, told us his way to live or do things, then that is the best way to do it. We can't give in to those thoughts that exalt themselves as we know better ways to do this. I probably said that wrong. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so, where am I at? Okay. So, let's go back to that verse 5 again. There's a lot in this verse 5. So, he also said, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So, um, taking thoughts captive means choosing what you will allow to take root in your mind. We talked a little bit about that last week, and we were talking about Pam's and all of our favorite verse, Philippians 4, 8, where you, you think on the good things, right? That's one way you, you help protect what's taking root in your mind. You put the good things in your mind. That's a good place to start. <clears throat> but it can be more than that. It can be more than just even the positive thoughts. So choosing correctly looks like asking for God's guidance. So when you're thinking about things, you're, you're bringing God into your thought process. <clears throat> it also can be turning from sinful sources of behavior. That means if, uh, for me, like if there's a certain location that causes you to sin, a certain activity that causes you to sin, um, hanging around with the wrong people that maybe leads you down the wrong path, the wrong thought process. You turn from those. You walk away from those situations. And I've, hmm? All of those things right. redirect you the wrong way. Right, yeah, and sometimes you've got to monitor what you're <laughs> intaking. So like for me, I knew there was a particular sin I was dealing with for a while. You rowdy ones over there, don't make me ring the bell. <laughs> um, I was telling them this is a sinful place, we shouldn't be here because of those candies. Mm -hmm. Okay, I won't put them out next week, no candies. Okay. And now they're all upset because... <laughs> anyway, I know for me, there were, for a while, there was a particular sin I was battling, and it was the location. If I was in that location, especially at a particular time of day, let's say, I was going to fall prey to that temptation and sin. So I had to train myself. I'm not going to that location. I'm not doing it at that time of day or whatever. I'm not putting myself in that situation. So sometimes turning from whatever is causing you the problem. So if there's a particular person in your life that's always dragging you into sin, then maybe it's time that that person isn't a regular part of your life. <laughs> until you learn to not fall into sin or temptation with that person. You have to walk away. Um, well, it's something you sometimes need to think about and ask, like number one, ask God's guidance. Is there something you should or should not be doing? Is it a TV show? Is it, a, you know, what is it? <laughs> sometimes there are things we're doing that we shouldn't be doing. We need to turn away from it. So number three is being continually in God's word. When you take uh, breaks from the word, like if you're not getting into it daily, suddenly you're not into it for a week for some reason, you can start seeing how you're, the way you're acting changes or the way you're falling more prey to sin and temptation. So I know when I've missed periods of time, it affects me. It affects my attitude. So the more I'm in the word, Amen. the goal is every day be in the word reading, studying, whatever I can get done every day. And it makes a big difference. You know, if I'm Miss Cranky Pants, it's probably because I'm... <laughs> I'm not doing... Not in the worst as much as I should be. Well, she can't wear the grumpy pants because I'm wearing them. <laughs> so I'm the, cranky, have those. I'm the cranky pants. She's, she's grumpy pants. I like the seven dwarfs are here. They're just all in their pants, which is kind of a... Which one of us is dopey? <laughs> 
I was I was dopey because of my allergy pills. <laughs> yeah. So number four is using God's word as wrong thoughts into our mind. So this is where if you've got scripture in front of you, even if you don't have it memorized, open up your Bible. You know, open up a topical search on your YouVersion app, whatever. Find some of God's word to countermand what bad thoughts are going on in your head. Stop it in its tracks with God's word. So another way is recognizing and confessing and turning from wrong thoughts. So when you know you've had a bad attitude or some sinful thought enter your head, like uh, maybe you're um, jealous of someone and you start thinking bad thoughts about them, uh, or maybe you're comparing yourself to someone and you shouldn't be comparing yourself, recognize that sin and <clears throat> stop and confess it right then and turn from those thoughts. You know, if you're if you're having trouble with being jealous of someone, maybe you need to stop and turn it around and start thinking about the positive traits of that person. And don't think on the negative traits of that person. There's different ways you can do this. You just, you have to address each situation. Sometimes comparing yourself to someone else and finding yourself on the short end of the stick all the time is really... Well, that's a sin. It is. You're not supposed to be comparing yourself. But it's another way to, another area we have to take our thoughts captive. Otherwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just part of the, it's just one of those battles. There's a lot of different ways the devil gets us. So, I want to just take a, a look at a, one of the Bible people we know, Cain, who also was originally, <clears throat> came out of the whole Garden of Eden experience. Uh, in Genesis 4, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> and I wanted to see what, how, what happened with him. Genesis 4, 3 through 7. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. So uh, right off the bat, God's directing um, Cain's focus to his thoughts. He's making him recognize, why are you angry, and why is your countenance fallen? He's starting with the thought, the thought process. It's wrong inside Cain's head. He's jealous of his brother's offering get accepted by God. So his thought process is wrong. So God's drawing his attention to that. Uh, can you imagine having God just directly talk to you in a loud voice and say, shape up, you're thinking wrong. <laughs> but he does with his Holy Spirit. Sometimes he does tell us that, that, that strongly, but sometimes it's real gentle. But anyway, so Cain's um, <clears throat> sin and murder of his brother started in his mind. It's, why are you angry? And God's trying to get him to think right, but he's, he's not catching on. So God was asking Cain to take his thoughts captive, basically, by recognizing the issue and refocusing on doing things God's way. What was Cain's issue? He knew he'd been taught you're supposed to offer a lamb the best but he's supposed to also offer a lamb yes and he could have traded with his brother for a, a lamb he could have sacrificed <clears throat> well he's he gonna have to, have to give something to his brother. yeah yeah and so he didn't do things the correct way he knew how to do it and god said you know i don't respect your offering According to the way it's worded, he didn't even take the best of what he had. Right, right. He just took an offering. Right. It wasn't sat, it wasn't meeting the requirements that he was supposed to. It wasn't a good offering. It wasn't an offering from his heart <clears throat> the way it should have been. And so. Oh, oh, well, okay, yeah. If you look at it that way, because that's where his heart was at. Yeah. What did you say? I couldn't hear you. It was an offering from his heart because his heart at that particular point in time is. This should be good enough for you. Yeah. Right. 
his heart wasn't right in the first place, so it was a, a, a reflective of his heart. You're right. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. So, <clears throat> um, for us, if we are having thoughts of anger, jealousy, anxiousness, stress, low self-esteem, pride, etc., whatever your issue is, <clears throat> then we need to recognize and acknowledge them, confess them, <clears throat> and refocus them using God's truth from his word. Maybe I'll use conjunctions next time. <laughs> yeah. I did. I didn't make you do anxiousness. <laughs> oh, look at jealous. I look at the typo in jealousy. <laughs> I had a whole extra L. I created my own word. <laughs> so. I always see these things later, of course. Even though I've proofread it several times, I don't find them till later. I'm obviously reading, proofreading too fast. So, you know, here God's telling him to refocus. Don't be angry. Don't let your countenance fall. Do what is right. That's what God's telling him. Do what he, he had it out. He could have just done what was right. He could have said he was sorry to God, could have said I shouldn't be mad at my brother. <clears throat> but instead, he took it to the furthest extent kept going with this thought pattern, just said, oh, I'll just go eliminate Abel. Like, that's going to solve the problem. It's like, why? why? In the world, there's like five people in the world, and you go kill one. <laughs> I mean, I know there were more than that at that point, but it just seemed so, so odd. Well, have you ever had, I know I have. I'll tell you my deep, dark secrets. Oh, you better turn off the camera. <laughs> um... <laughs> I have been angry and just let my anger go and gone off the deep end. I didn't kill anybody, <laughs> but I'm yelling, I'm mad. I feel the extreme anger inside of me and that wasn't the right way to be. And poor Carolyn just had to sit there and listen to it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I know it, your emotions, once they start going, they can keep going. And, and I've been there when something just pushes your button. Maybe it's the final yeah, straw and your emotions just keep going. You don't let yourself get into check. And no doubt that's probably what happened to Cain. He probably just kept going with his anger and jealousy and wouldn't listen to God. Just let loose. The crime of passion, so to speak. You just keep going. You know, thankfully, I've never murdered anybody, at least that I'm telling you about. <laughs> Right. In your heart, so mm -hmm. it's all about the heart. Mm -hmm. and the problem is when we allow our emotions. That's why you should never trust your heart. Right. Don't that's trust your issue. emotions. Go, oh, trust your no. No. Your heart is desperately, <clears throat> desperately wicked above all things. It's the last place you should trust. You need to redirect, and like you're saying, redirect your thoughts to why. Why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. What is going on with me? That is not God. And I and I think that the, if God's word can't turn you back, mm -hmm. you're really in trouble. Mm -hmm. And for God to speak like that, and for him being so active, I think that's the hardest thing for me to understand, except that, of course, you're not seeing the day as they are, but it is that you're walking with God, He's talking to you directly, mm -hmm. and as you go farther along into this conversation, it's like, what are you talking about? Now it's too much for you to bear, and I'm mean, going ahead. So it's like, it just goes, did we get to the point where we're like literally jumping headlong off the cliff? Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like, wow. And I think we all have that tendency. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that can be good and bad. That can be good and bad. I 
sometimes tell that I'm having a time out, I'm going to my room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she just keeps, and I say, I'm going, I'm going, and I lock my door. Mm -hmm. I, I have to lock If I don't, I get well, angry. Well, you got kids. That's why you guys call it. I leave the room. Mommy. Yes. Yes, I understand. Locking yeah. yourself in the bathroom doesn't work by the way because they knock on the door and tell you. Just <laughs> they figured the out. They figured out. Yeah, they, they find ways to open it. I, I like how you try to get about, in a sense, making a choice. But when, well, we've all experienced that anger that gets out of control. Mm -hmm. But I like where um, God says um, in one version, um, Sin is crouching at the door. door. Yes. And that is visual I get picture. And is that you're, you're, you're at a place where you have a decision to make. Mm -hmm. And this is just waiting to right. get in. But, but we then make a choice. Are we going to let us get it? Let it get us over? Mm -hmm. That's the I had. It is. Mm -hmm. I've been at that threshold many times where you got to make that decision. Sometimes I do the right thing, and sometimes I don't. <clears throat> and I, I, I hear God problem. telling me. I had a real problem with anger last year, year before last, and it took a long time of being in God's Word and praying about it. Mm -hmm. And every time I would feel myself getting angry again, I'd have to go back to God's Word. But I had to separate myself in order to deal with it because mm -hmm. until I had myself back in God's, I just couldn't deal with anything else. It was just overwhelming to me because I couldn't get rid of it mm -hmm. by myself. Mm -hmm. It required right. his intervention. That's exactly right. And getting in the Word is one of the best, best things to do. Whether you're dealing with depression or anger or jealousy, whatever, yes. whatever is going on. Sometimes it's all it's, combined. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it is. Sometimes you're dealing with a bunch of emotions all at once. <clears throat> but you're, you're right. You can't, you, you can't let your emotions dictate to you what you should be doing because your emotions are never going to direct you right. And that's one of the false <clears throat> philosophies or teachings that's out there right now in the world. One of several that irritate me when I hear, whether it's inside the education system or the social <clears throat> system of the world, they're telling you, you can have whatever you want, you just have to dream it. That's not true. <laughs> You work hard. You, you can, can be whoever. Yeah, you can. That's it's God. It's all up to God. And the other thing they say is follow your heart. That is why, like the word, your heart. No, it's not. You can't follow your heart. That's not. It's very deceiving. Yeah. So, so Paul tells us uh, about battling uh, using spiritual weapons, and you all know this passage. Passage. Ephesians 6 10 through 14 <clears throat> finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and then it keeps going on through the whole list of the armor. I don't want to focus on all the armor tonight. I want us to just look at basically the first piece of armor here that's listed, which is the uh, belt of truth. Um, and, and we'll, we'll talk more about the other armor later as we go through this study. So the fleshly and thought battle is being waged against us by all sorts of evil forces according to this passage that we just read. In our heavenly places, which is here, right? Because we're already Christians, we're in our heavenly place with Christ. But the, way, the battle is being waged against us. As, as Jan was talking about, it's crouching out your door, right? It's out to get you because... As, we, as we've talked about before, there's the devil doesn't want us effective for God, doesn't want us fruitful, he doesn't want us living a blessed life. He wants us <clears throat> unhappy, miserable, and not helping anybody else get to heaven either. He wants us ineffective. 
So <clears throat> and we need to start protecting ourselves by wearing the belt of truth. Hey, look, words were backwards. <clears throat> That's where it begins, which is what we've been talking about, taking that word in. So we're not going to stand very long in this battle without the word. Like even in Pam's testimony, the word's what got her through her battle with anger, right? And I know for different battles I've had, it's been the words, me throwing myself into the word. And that's what usually gets me through a lot of stuff. Um, Cain, um, he didn't stand in the battle against him at all, did he? He caved into his thoughts, and uh, they were wrong. He didn't refocus like God. God gave him the word directly. <laughs> his word was, you know, we need to do this right. Do what is right, and you'll be okay. So, um, because he didn't take that word seriously and follow through with it, uh, the devil basically just got an emotional stronghold on him using the jealousy and the anger by Kim and uh, took him captive and he ended up killing his brother. I mean, it went to the furthest extreme. I mean, what a horrible thing. Now, I know for me, I have never stepped, like I said before, into actual physical murder of somebody. But I do know that at times the devil's gotten me in, his, in strongholds, taken me captive with different emotional strongholds, whether it was I was angry or, or I was jealous or, or low self-esteem. Devil uses that one a lot on people where he breaks your confidence. Um, and I've also been taken into some physical uh, strongholds, overeating. Mm -hmm. That's a physical stronghold that gets us. Because uh, then you're not as healthy. You can't. You're not as productive, maybe for God, because you can't do as much. I mean, or your health goes down, or whatever. Uh, there's all kinds of even physical things that can go wrong with the devil. Can get you trapped into sexual sins uh, that hold you captive. So there are physical and emotional strongholds. The devil's going to try to take you, take control of you with, and it starts with your thoughts. So if you use God's word, you can fight that battle much more effectively and, and hopefully win because you're depending upon God and his word. And it's through the Holy Spirit using the word that I've taken in that I've been able to fight battles. He's the one that reminds me of scripture I've learned. You know, he brings it back to mind, helps me, uh, says it to me directly, very strongly sometimes. So what did Psalm 119.11 tell us? Just, you guys know this one. Mm -hmm. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So where is that word supposed to be? In your heart. In your heart. How does it get there? Reading it over and over again, again and memorizing it. Memorizing it, meditating on it, reading it over and over again. Uh, I know for me, as older I've gotten, it's harder to memorize. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm getting, I get much more forgetful now. I think I've got it memorized and then I've forgotten pieces of it. Got to start all over. I, I knew I knew that verse ever so long ago, but don't quite. What's really good, though, is even if you can't memorize stuff word for word, if you can know it um, conceptually, that's a good part of it. And then the Holy Spirit can actually just bring it back to you. A lot of times I say translation according to Pam because <laughs> I, know, I know the concept. Right. And I know, I may not know the address, but I can tell you what mm -hmm. God's Word says. Yeah, what the concept is. If you can get some of the concepts down, that's a big start. It's and not... When the pastor says, that's a, a, a paraphrase. <laughs> yeah, that's a paraphrase. So I use that now. <laughs> yeah. I'm paraphrasing, but it yeah. says. <laughs> you get most of it. You don't and get it per, per syllable or whatever, you know. And if, uh, if I d can't, if I get... Confused or whatever, or I didn't get the <coughs> boy you version. I am so thankful to this. Hard. Putting in a word and getting those verses mm -hmm. out when you need it. Oh yeah. I love you version. Very helpful. Very helpful. It's real easy to pull it out even when you're in the hospital. And Kathy, you, you mentioned old enough to know better. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, God really got me good the other day. Yeah. Uh -oh. I'm old enough to deal with people and I have this friend quote unquote 
and she uh, hadn't treated me right. She took some things from me, and I was trying to be hospitable. Well, I guess I finally just got fed up, and uh, I just told her the last time she came, um, I don't run a public bathroom and toilet. Oh. And that was an awful thing to say, mm. but it's how I felt. And then she left, and later I went in, and I uh, was doing my devotional reading, and lo and behold, the first article I read from the In Touch series was on hospitality. Oh, oh no. my! I I got I just get chill thinking about it. Goodness, God's timing, huh? I, yeah, I thought, oh, and I thought, well, I owe her an apology, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I God, God has perfect timing on stuff like that. <clears throat> Whether it's a devotion you come across or a, something that somebody says to you, it's just exactly right on topic. <laughs> He's praying and praying and praying. Oh, Michael said, 21 days it fits me. Mm -mm. We're mm -hmm. not doing this alone. No. Not only do we have our Father in Heaven that is actually sending the angels out, we'll not go mm -hmm. through what you need to do with it, but, but that prayer, Peter, he's walking on the water, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he's not. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that always encourages me that I, God help me right now. Yeah. Because right now, like, because that's what mm -hmm. I did today. I got that letter. I was like, mm. oh man, God. I don't know if I can do one more thing. <laughs> right, exactly. I have a bunch on me right now, and it's really, really hard. It's one more. And I was like, you know what? It's so funny that how many times I've come to this meeting on a Monday night when something terrible is happening. Yeah. Oh. And it's like, I'm like, I'm going to go. Can't think about this right now. Yeah. You got to go. It's like, you got to deal with this thing. I. Mm. You know what happened, you were there. Mm -hmm. I need to let it go and just come here and be with all these people who love you mm -hmm. and be amongst the fellowship of God that helps to support us. We're not alone in this no. thing. Praise mm -hmm. God. Well, my main goal tonight was I just want to talk about the one armor, but we will eventually talk about the other things, the other armor, things like prayer. Prayer is one of the armors. No, no, it's just so you know, because we'll get to all of it at some point as we go through this study, but I kind of just wanted to stop on the word part tonight. Um, so take our thoughts captive. <clears throat> we need to hide or store up or memorize God's word, is what we learned from Psalm 119, <clears throat> verse 11. And over the years, since I was young, I have tried a lot of different methods for memorizing the word and hiding it in my heart <clears throat> and a lot of different types of things. But I like one of the things I've been doing that Terry suggested in one of his messages clear back in September. I don't know if you guys <clears throat> heard that message, but he suggested that um, app um, fighter verses. Say again. Fighter verses. So I downloaded that app, and I downloaded several apps, but this is Cyber this is one of the ones. Fighter, 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 fighter verses, and it's a, a, out of the different memor first memorization type apps that they're out there. It's the one I I kind of like the best so far. Um, it's got devotionals. It's got um, memory verse uh, schedule if you want to follow their schedule. You can do your own verses. Um, you can even set up your own topics and put your own verses into the topics. What I like about it are the quizzes. 
And they've got songs too. You can, they've got verse memorization with songs as well. But like the quizzes, you have your whatever memory verse, whether it's one you've picked out or one that's on their schedule. And it'll put blanks like this type of quiz. There's different types of quizzes on there. It puts blanks and as you touch it, it puts in the word. So you see if you know it, and you touch it and you work it, and then you can keep repeating it and it keeps alternating words. So it gradually makes you see. Because the app I have doesn't alternate. Yeah, this alternates, yes. Does it come in different um, translations? I can't see what it Yeah, like I, okay, it has a certain set of translations with it, but I wanted New King James. I had to pay two ninety nine for New King James. Oh, a month? Yeah. A month? No, or? one time. Okay. Oh, one time. One time. It was just an addition. Now, you might like the other translations in there. I wanted to do New King James. So um, I bought. I thought it was worth it for two ninety nine one time purchase, but it'll alternate the words. It increases the amount of words that are missing. So it gradually makes you. It's got different levels. I mean, it's just one of the types of quizzes that's in there, and so it actually makes you think more and start processing it more in your head. So I, 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 I it's kind of fun in a way. So. Um, my suggestion, if you're having trouble finding time to memorize verses, because it is, we're all very busy, you know, do you play word, words with friends on your phone or things like that? <laughs> well, if you do stuff like that, then maybe you cut that time in half and you spend half in verse memorization, half in doing your fun game. If you're spending an hour on Facebook, cut your time in half. If, you know what I'm saying? Find ways to work it in. Maybe you need to wake up 15 minutes earlier. Maybe you turn off the TV 15 minutes sooner before you go to bed. <laughs> Whatever it is, find an adjustment. Start with five minutes a day. Whatever it takes to get you practicing memorizing scripture. Yeah, it takes a commitment, but you'll be better off for it when you do it. Because you'll have, even if you don't totally 100% memorize a verse, if you get most of the verse, the concept, you'll be better off for it. You'll have a paraphrase. How you'll have a paraphrase at least, you know, whatever, whatever works. But anyway, if if you want to try an app like this, there are a lot of different apps. I looked at several of them, downloaded several of them, and this is the one so far I <coughs> seems to work with my brain the best so far. So, you know, everybody's different. So, but like if you like music there are song verses on there too that they have so you could learn little songs i guess so i haven't done that one yet so and i like because i could add my own verses and topics even there were topics in there that i thought should have been covered that they didn't cover so I, I, I languages oh yeah i'm sure yeah why are you going to learn them in spanish i'm just wondering <laughs> in your spare time learn a new language and Kathy, I, um, I was thinking about a verse that came to my mind, and I just check it. And it's on Proverbs 4.23, says that we should guard our hearts with all diligence, because from out of it flows the issues of life. Yeah. And it says this scripture implies that whatever we allow to enter our hearts, if not properly examined, and evaluate it properly, we undoubtedly be expressed, no, it will undoubtedly be expressed in our lives yeah. and our actions in positive or negative ways. Right. What, so, what, yeah. From the heart is coming, like, is, is deceiving and blah, blah, blah. It's for but it just says that we have to guard mm -hmm. our heart because oh, from, from it comes life yeah. as well. So it may come a lot of bad stuff, but it depends on what we mm -hmm. put in. Right. decide to put in or, or discard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why you got to feed feed your brain the good stuff, feed your heart mm -hmm. the good stuff. If you and eliminate the bad. Eliminate the bad. And <clears throat> I've I've even lately I I have a harder and harder time watching regular TV. It just, I, I am much happier watching other stuff that's Christian or, or whatever. I, I don't really enjoy much of this regular secular TV anymore. And there are a lot more options these days for watching other stuff. You, you know, yeah, it's been a big change. A lot of, lot of cool stuff to watch nowadays. 
<clears throat> sometimes it takes more thought process because <clears throat> spiritual stuff can be harder, you know, to take in all the time, whereas regular TV is a little more brain dead at times. <laughs> you can zone out with it easier, but but I don't know. I'm happier with the TV off most of the time lately or just watching good television, good good shows, good programming. You know, it's it's just kind of where I'm at right now. Maybe I'm just tired of all the junk in the world. I don't know. Just I'm tired of like, commercials. Yeah, commercials are, are bad horrible. enough. Horrible commercials. So anyway, I just like you to encourage you try to find some way to get some verse memorization into your life somehow. Find a time slot. Do whatever it takes. You come to my Sunday school class. There I you go. The kids use half an hour to memorize scripture. That's cool. But you know we're working for candy. So. <laughs> hey, if that's what works for you, you know that might work for you. I, you know. <laughs> I hadn't thought well, about that. Maybe I should reward price. myself with candy. Maybe yeah. I would do better yeah, too. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so to live in our promised land, our abundant life, strong and victoriously, because that's what our goal is with this study, we need to take our thoughts captive and memorize God's word as a result we will pull down Satan's strongholds. That's what Cain needed to do. That's what we needed to do. We need to pull down any strongholds Satan's trying to set up in our life. And he's busy trying to do that. He wants us trapped in his little stronghold of, of unproductivity and unfruitful life for God. So next time... We're going to talk about the three promises that God gave to Joshua as they were entering the promised land or about to enter the promised land. Okay?